The Kremlin? That Snatcher said something about taking Jamie to their Kremlin. Metal, That's what I what said. What spot in Neo Kobe would match up with the location of Moscow's Kremlin? Calculating. This is the spot. It's presently occupied by an old church. It's rather large, but reports indicate it's been abandoned for nearly 20 years. And it's right in the middle of the Snow Nine and Subway area. That's it! That's their headquarters! Their new Kremlin! Gillian, let's go! The new Kremlin, Wait, if you will. Gillian. I want to go with you. Sorry, Mika. Hey, I'm a Junker too, you know. See? I know, and you're a great one at that. So take me with you, then. You head to the summit to warn the delegates. They haven't given up, you know. The summit's in Kyoto. I'm not going to be the only one to run. You've got to convince them not to use nukes on Neo Kobe. We found their hideout. There's no need now to sink the whole island. Yes, but... It's a tough job. Can you do it? Okay, Gillian. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Thank you, Mika. Don't say it, okay? Let's go, Gillian. Gillian? Yes? Um... Uh... What's wrong? How about dinner sometime? <laughs> dinner? Yeah, you know, dinner. Hmm. Mika. Mm. Not interested. I thought it would be nice, you know, to kick back, relax. It's Christmas after all. Christmas, huh? I'll be back by then. Gillian, we have to hurry. That's a promise, right? I heard you. Yeah. Okay. But I gotta go to church first. I'll see you soon then. Okay, Metal, let's go. Yeah, he said like dinner. Mmm. <laughs> This is the last turbo cycle. We gotta look at it. Make sure this one's not messed with too. This spare turbo cycle has not been painted, but that does not affect its locomotive functions. It looks painted green to me. Area. The parking lot has become rather lonely. It appears quite safe. It has not been tampered with. Oh, that's a relief. I do not read any motion. You and I are the only ones here. Enter the turbo cycle. All right, now boarding the turbo cycle. We've boarded the turbo cycle. Where would you like to go? Of course, I know the answer to that question. So why did I bother asking it? I don't know. I'm a robot. I do these things. Another church. I've input the map data on the Kremlin's locations. Lift off. <laughs> yeah, right. We can eat the pizza and the soup. The Neo Kobe pizza. Flight configuration. Now gaining altitude. Jamie, please be safe. Gillian, please keep in mind that we're working with a strict time limit. A 50 year debt in three hours. Snow! Snow 9, to be specific. We've entered the Snow 9 region. Please put on your breathing filter. Direct inhalation is dangerous. All right. Radio transmissions will also be impossible from this point on. Understood? Understood. Now descending. Conversion to hover configuration complete. Gillian, we've arrived. Exit the turbo cycle. Oh, you can go back to HQ? That'd be great. I wonder what happened if you tried that. We've arrived at the church. Wow, now I know why they call it their Kremlin. Alright, let's save here. Oh, you can use the video phone too. Yes, that is a good idea. Go to one now. Look. Building. It's a very old church. It bears quite a resemblance to St. Basil's Cathedral. Or Basil. No doubt they thought the same thing. Why didn't we think of that before? It appears to be snow, but it's actually Snow 9. Try to avoid inhaling any of it directly. It's surrounded by a large grove of tall cedar trees. 
This is likely to keep just about anybody away. Given the season, a few Christmas lights would really liven up the scene. The building is about 50 years old, but appears very well maintained. So where's the entrance? On the front side of the building, where entrances normally are. Come on, Gillian, we don't have time for this stupidity. This is definitely Snow 9. A sensor scan reveals that a tube liner tunnel passes directly underneath this area. <laughs> Same tassel. Well, that's no surprise. Looks like we've got the right place. I'm not showing anything out of the ordinary. Listen. The only sound is that of the wind. Go inside. Alright, now opening the door. What's wrong? Won't open? I've scanned it, and it's not locked. It is probably rusted into place. Not surprising. After all, our friends always go in and out through the basement. Let's push it together. All right. One. Two. Three. That got it. What's this? It would appear to be some kind of a chapel for the Snatchers. Are you telling me those things pray? To whom? No doubt to their creator, that portrait on the wall is probably a representation of him. Ooh. A portrait. This person is no doubt the one the Snatchers worship as their creator. This guy. Isn't that random? Random Hajil? It was a fake explosion. One moment, I'll compare the picture with my data on random. I guess that would explain why uh, Shin Ko survived the explosion. While the facial bone structure of the individual in the portrait is nearly identical to that of random, a positive identification is impossible, as the picture is not a photograph. That just looks too much like him to be a coincidence. Although his, like, hair is totally different. Remember he had, like, spiky gray hair? These are the chairs for worshippers in the chapel, no doubt. Everything is nice and orderly. It's as if the pre-collapsed Soviet Union has been recreated here. Something is written on the painting. The recreator Modnar, which is random backwards. <laughs> so this is Professor Modnar? The one the Snatcher was talking about, eh? It appears to be a portrait of that person. There are a number of scratches on the surface. They were almost certainly caused by the Snatchers. It's all very organized, almost inhumanly so. Hmm, there is another room farther back. Oh wait, I'm just... I'm not reading anything at all. So they have already left for the summit? Just listen. Just us in the wind, that's all I can hear. Alright, continue back. Now moving into the back room. Snow Snow Snatchers! Look at them all! I'm not picking up any energy readings. They are all deactivated in some kind of suspension mode. So this is their warehouse, huh? There must be a few hundred of them here. They continue all the way back. Still, this doesn't look like a factory to me. That's why we're gonna look at it. The Snatcher. These are endo structures which have yet to have the artificial skin installed. The bone sizing devices and skull slits are all still set to the smallest sizes. But their victims haven't been chosen yet. They're all just waiting their turn.
There seem to be a number of containers stacked up in the back of the room. None of these snatchers appear damaged. All they need is their energy packs. The gender units have yet to be installed, however. Gender units? I do not see any tools or equipment for maintaining anything in the area. This room would appear to be just a storage area. There is some kind of a label here. 23rd Siberian Investigative Force. Siberian Investigative Force? That must be the thing I worked for. It would appear that these snatchers were brought to Neo Kobe from the si Siberian neutral zone. It seems that the investigative forces have been responsible for shipping the snatchers. In other words, the investigative forces have been snatched, just like when they found us. I see. So the Siberian investigative forces bring the snatchers out of Sir Siberia and into storage here. I think you're right, Metal. And then the snatchers just wait here in storage to be reactivated and adjusted after their victims are selected. A rather efficient system. I wonder where the actual snatching takes place. The back part of this room may hold the answer to that question. Indeed so. I'm not picking up any large movement signals. It's perfectly quiet. Let's continue back. Are you ready, Gillian? Now heading for the room farther back. The Snatcher's Culturing Room. The mechanism is operating. Uh? Gillian, there are Snatchers with their artificial skin already installed here. This is where they fuse the artificial skin onto the Snatcher's endostructure. First, they adjust the size of the still skinless Snatcher to the size of the individual who is to be snatched. The Snatcher's overall shape and size can be adjusted by expansion or contraction of sizing rods. Their sex is controlled by gender units, which are installed at this point. Then, the face is modified to match the intended victim by adjusting the size of the upper and lower jaw, cheekbones, temporal bones, and tooth alignment. Just like Gibson said, that means there are limits to the size of the people that they can snatch. That's right. The limits of the mechanism mean that they can't snatch children, the elderly, or people who are very tall. Or Why not? Why not this is where the artificial muscles attach. Is it organic? No. It appears to be coated with a type of plastic gel capable of mechanical response. Like human muscles, it creates mechanical energy through chemical reactions. And this is where the artificial skin is attached. In order to prevent the synthetic cells, developed using biotechnological protein design techniques, from rejecting the inorganic material below, they attach it gradually over a number of days. And this is the stuff that gets cancer if they stay out in the sun too long. Finally, they attach body and scalp hair. The process involves transplant of synthetic hair follicles as well, so the hair will grow back if it's lost. What about scars or birthmarks? It would appear that they make those adjustments at this point in the process, as they would for wrinkles to simulate age. Yeah, this all seems like... <laughs> Knowing how... How the process works is kind of irrelevant at this point when we're just trying to stop the, you know, destroy them, really. All right, did we look at the area? I don't think so. We looked at the snatching process. Wow, six foot eight. Yeah, ghost. Good, good news for you, then. You're the legitimate article. The real ghost. A computer terminal is installed on each preservation cylinder. These cylinders are used to culture the Snatcher's artificial skin. Endostructures are submerged within them. It appears that weak ultraviolet rays are being projected from above. They probably could have explained it when we were in the Queen's Hospital labs. This is really advanced, way beyond anything we saw at Queen's Hospital. Oh, I guess they told me, huh? <laughs> The whole area is protected as a clean room. There is a door at the far end of the room. It's locked, but I should be able to open it from this side. 
The power is on. Look at this, Gillian. The data of people to be snatched is all being neatly processed. So this is where the whole thing begins. The endostructures arrive here from the Kremlin. Then they convert them into copies of their victims. And finally, they head out into the city using the old subway system. With artificial skin maintenance being handled at Queen's Hospital. But who's behind all this? Gillian, look at this. There are some finished snatchers over here. Get a load of this. The U.S. President, the Prime Ministers of Japan, and the U.K. And me. Gillian, you're in here too. Huh, <laughs> figures. They were looking to snatch every VIP at the summit. And the last junker, you. It definitely looks like they plan on moving out beyond the Okobe. If they were to snatch every major world leader, they'd practically be able to control the planet. Still, that's odd. With their flawed skin, pulling something off like that would really be difficult. Chin said they had found the key to developing a perfect artificial skin. Maybe they've already produced it. No idea. But the number of snatchers here makes it clear that they're up to something new. Gillian, this is definitely their nest. We should destroy everything. Not yet. Not until we found Jamie. Uh, Metal, uh, how much time do we have left? The summit should have begun by now. Can you? We don't have much time. And once our legal privileges are suspended, I won't be able to help. In fact, I'll be forced to restrain you. I know, I know. If the military wants to avoid nukes and goes for a surgical strike on this facility, uh, what would they likely use? Probably a phased particle beam from one of the attack satellites. A phased particle beam, huh? That'll wipe this complex right off the map. Everything, including the soil, will simply evaporate. The attack will leave just a large crater. Metal, can you convince them to give me another hour? Even 30 minutes will help. Understood. I'll try my best. And I'll try to find and rescue Jamie in that time. I can't transmit here due to interference from the Snow Nine. I'll have to leave the area and then send the message. All right. Do it, Metal. Gillian, don't forget. 30 minutes. You must get out before then. I understand. Gillian, I'm sorry I couldn't help you better. Don't worry about it. I'll be able to move faster by myself anyway. 30 minutes should be plenty. No offense, no Melgar. Yes, sir. Don't forget. 30 minutes. How, how many minutes? I've forgotten. Couldn't they? 30 minutes. Individually? Oh, this is going to be tight. That room's the only place left to check. Let's take a look. And couldn't you individually sabotage like some of the world leaders? Like I understand not nuking the, the destroying the whole facility because Jamie's there, but take out some of the like the snatchers themselves. Oh, we gotta take the death here. Uh, yeah, I'll take the death here. So these are like different types of insectors, larger ones it looks like. <laughs> Sixty minutes, got it. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, shit, that took three. So they actually hop around. Yeah, I withdrew my, my uh, blaster right at the start, so that kind of screwed me. All right. My justifier. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, it's the same problem from before where if you miss once, that's basically like three hits because there's the domino effect of the time that you've lost and then other of the 
of the Ravigan sectors are in place, so you take multiple hits. But you can't wipe out like foreign screen at once. So basically, you just can't. You can afford maybe one hit, or sorry, one miss, which is equivalent to like three hits over time. Oh shit, I forgot to. Alright, just take the death. I forgot to. I forgot to, uh. Oh, this just happened. I forgot to, uh. Draw the blaster. I'm still talking. Um, bum, bum. Okay, here we go. Hey! Ah, oh, doesn't fire have to time? Yeah, sometimes I'm there and it, it, it doesn't fire. So then I have to go back to that same spot to try to fire again. Rufus doesn't like those insectors either. Wow, that that that's pretty tough. So you got to be like just shooting all the damn time. Wow, I'm surprised we got that far. That's definitely like a PB as far. I think we got farthest into the sequence there. Yeah, it gets pretty rough though. It's like long too. A lot of them. But half the deaths have been intentional, but... Oh shit. There's a period early on where they like they're giving you one at a time and then they throw like three at once. And I think if you can get by that section flawless without taking a hit, and then maybe you have a chance later, but 
If you take one or two hits there, you're not going to be able to withstand the barrage later. You're not going to have enough uh, hits left. Bom, bom, bom. So I think the last sequence we took maybe five deaths before we um, beat it. Yeah, but this one's obviously going to be tougher since they're hopping around and they're throwing more at once. What the fuck? Already they threw five at us? What was that? Alright, so it is random then. Definitely randomized. Did you see that? Right off the bat, they threw like five of them at me. So it's RNG. We need good RNG. Oof. Please don't buy anything, at least for the moment, that'll be distracting. What the fuck? We are actually doing really well there. Uh, till they loaded them all on me. <laughs> Alright, does anyone want to make any box? Yeah, so Haku, everyone can see the counter. Now is probably when we just now probably just over half of those are probably unintentional deaths by now. Yeah, between yeah we had five this time and yeah it's probably been seven or eight now this for the, this uh, sequence. All right, we'll turn off eyes. Oh, oh man, I'm hoping we can get the game done. We only have an hour left. But hopefully this is like the last big action sequence. There might be another one where there's like, you know, you take on the final boss or whatever. Kind of similar to what we saw with Benson Cunningham. All right, let's get back to it. So maybe I have to come up with some sort of strat. I wonder if like spamming, spamming fire is gonna continue, is work, work? Maybe I should test that. Yeah, I pretty much have to spam fire right here. Yes, we did it. Whew. Spamming worked. I wasn't ready for that. They almost got me. All right, uh, let's open the next door. Don't tell me it's another sequence, please. At least let me save. At least let me save, please. Oh no.
Doesn't look like there's anything here. Ah! Fuck. No, draw the- Oh shit, I'm not in the window. I'm not taking the death because I don't want to have to do that other sequence again. Shit. Hopefully they put us back from here. Damn it. Alright, I'm hoping they um, did the... Oh, I don't think the death came in. Please put us back in that oh, position no. with just the Snatcher, please. Please. Yes, yeah, so the problem is I gave up the Cedrics, and then I, so I wasn't in the window. So I was pressing A to draw the blaster, but it wasn't working because I wasn't in the window. You are yeah. so dead. Oh, dagger. Please, please, please. No, fuck. We got. Damn it. Bam, watch out. A we gotta do it again. Fuck. Nima. Nice. All right, we did it twice in a row. Ooh, I wasn't ready for that. They almost got me. All right, uh, let's open the next door. Okay, this guy should be easier than this sequence, honestly. It's not that hard. I just can't take four hits off the bat before I draw my plaster. Doesn't look like there's anything here. Whoa! Uh. Yeah, okay, so it's all about reaction. You have to, uh... You don't get as much time to get a shot off before you're fired upon, so even if you shoot him, he gets his shot off. So that's really the difference here. Oh, God. Uh, so we're gonna keep on having to do that... spider sequence. It looks like that... I can't be sure, but it looks like with the Snatcher that it was the same sequence from the first time. That one might not be RNG, because there's that, there's that point where he appears in the center twice in a row in the background. So I think that might be a pattern. I don't, know, I don't think that one's random. Man, why couldn't they have put a checkpoint? Oh, that sucks. So I keep on having to redo this, which is very nerve wracking. Wow, that one, that one went really well. Ooh, I wasn't ready for that. They almost got me. I think we only took one hit there.
All right, uh, let's open the next door. Do we carry over the health or does it regenerate? I guess since we have Metal Gear, it doesn't regenerate. Doesn't look like there's anything here. Nice. Jeez, these guys are tough. Of course, I didn't exactly expect them to welcome me with open arms. Okay, uh, let's try this next door. Yeah, there's no Metal Gear, so there's no save. Oh, come on. Jamie! Thank goodness. Oh, shit. Oh, we weren't supposed to shoot her. <laughs> okay, good. Jamie! Are you all right? Gillian, you came for me. Are you hurt? No, they won't lay a finger on me. Not until the new artificial skin is completed anyway. That was artificial trolly. skin research? You? I didn't fall for it, Gillian, but it was trolly. I've got my memory back. All of it. What happened? Tell me, Jamie. They said they'd kill him. They said they'd kill Harry. They forced me. I had to help them with the skin development. They said I had to help them because the professor was ill. Wasn't getting any better. Gillian, the engineer Harry, he's our son. Yeah, we he's know. been living on his own now for 50 years. Jamie, I'm afraid that Harry's... There was nothing I could do. They forced me. But I can't do it anymore. Jamie! The professor... He just died. He was over a hundred. The professor? Madnar? What? This old man? Don't you remember? It's Professor Madner. Professor Petrovich Madner. What? This old man is Madner? He's been confined here for three years now, just to develop the Snatcher's artificial skin. Terrible. Doing that to your own father. Whose father? Jamie, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You really can't remember, can you? Jamie, tell me. Tell me who I am. Uh, what were we doing at the Kremlin? Are you sure you really want me to, Gillian? It's all so awful, but if you must know, I'll tell you. Try to remain calm, okay? No promises. Fifty-six years ago, you and I were involved in a top-secret Soviet project. It was still during the time of the Cold War. The gulf between East and West was as wide as ever. Everybody was worried about nukes. At that point, the world's armies were at their largest ever. Leaders still believed that a strong military meant a strong nation. There were rumors that there would be an agreement to end the production of nuclear weapons. On the other hand, the major powers like the U.S. began to get involved in a space weapons race. But not the Soviets. The conservative despots in the Kremlin had another, completely different idea for gaining military superiority. A horrible plan, something no one else would think of. At that time, the countries of the communist bloc were facing an economic crisis. Popular movements pushing for democracy were springing up all over. Communism itself was facing extinction. Facing pressure from the reformers, the Kremlin began to panic. And that's when that horrible, childish plan was launched. And that was the Snatcher Project. Replace your enemy's leaders with puppets of your own. Then you control their governments, their economies, take over a country from the inside out. That's right, Gillian. And to develop these robots, they assembled some of the most brilliant scientific minds from around the world. Some of them were even brought in against their will. At the crux of that development effort was a group called the Frankenstein Project Team. You and I were members of that team, Gillian. It was a four-person team led by the late Professor Modner here. 
The robotics expert was Professor Modner himself. His son, Elijah Modner, handled genetics and microbiology. Hajile, For nanobiology backwards. and picobiology, myself. And for behavioral science and psychology, you, Gillian. Early development was carried out at a lab in Novosibirsk, but was later moved to a secret facility under the Kremlin. At the time, the Glasnost and Perestroika movements were gaining momentum, and they rightly feared for the existence of the program if it should become known. But some of the reformers did learn of the project, and they conspired with the U.S. to block it. Gillian, you were a CIA special agent sent by the United States to infiltrate and sabotage the project. I was CIA? Yes, and the government knows that. That's why you were assigned to the Junker team. What? Who am I? Work on the project continued to go smoothly. But then, on June 6, 1996, there was that accident. A mysterious explosion at the Chernobyl facility spread a bacterial weapon that was under development there into the atmosphere, destroying the country and the project. Killian, was it you? Did you set off that explosion? I did. What? You can't be serious. You think I caused the catastrophe? Somehow, during the confusion, Professor Modner and our son Harry managed to get picked up by American agents. But we couldn't get out in time, you and I and Elijah. In a shelter below the Kremlin, we entered a cryogenic sleep. Our plan was to sleep there until the toxic effects of the bacteria were safely passed. And then 48 years later, three years ago, we were discovered by the 17th Special Investigative Force. Yes, but when they found us, Elijah's pod was already empty. Elijah Modner? That guy whose picture was in the church? The one that looks like random? Random Hajile, backwards. That's right, Elijah is alive. Elijah he was. is here and working on the Snatchers. Why don't you let me finish your little story? Who's there? It's been a while, hasn't it, Jamie? Ah, yes. And Gillian. It's me, Jamie. Elijah? Is that really you? Random? No. Not quite. So, you remember me, do you? I am Elijah Modnar, the only son of Professor Petrovich Modnar. I'm afraid I've grown somewhat old and feeble since we last met, however. Elijah, why are you doing this? Your father, Professor Modner, he just... He passed away a few minutes ago. What? My father? My father is dead? Elijah, what... What happened to you? The Elijah I knew could never do anything like this. I've changed, Jamie. These 40 years have changed me. I can't believe it. What happened to you? What happened to me? Jamie, do I actually have to explain it to you? Yes. Jamie, it's you. Your beauty is the cause of all that has come to pass here. Fifty-seven years ago, I was obsessed. With my research, yes. And with you, Jamie. At the time, I was still young, having just graduated with my genetic engineering degree. My father's connections got me on the team, and there, I met you. You were working as my father's assistant. Your beauty, your smile, I was stricken. I saw something in you that I never felt with women of my own country. You warmed my cold, young heart, Jamie. You opened me up, and I couldn't stop my feelings. Elijah! Oh, I was so happy. The political situation was crumbling around us, but every day was a joy. I gained my father's trust, and with you there watching over me, I was able to work as hard as I ever have on the project. However, my happiness did not last for long. Gillian, it was you. 
You showed up and all was ruined. You arrived and joined our project team. Far from home, Jamie found comfort in a man from the same land. Your relationship grew quickly, and all I could do was stand by and watch. Made Jamie your own move. and Gillian fell in love, were joined, and even had a child. Harry. Okay, so we forgot. My feelings for you only grew stronger. Worried about me, my father tried to have me removed from the project, but I persisted. Jamie, I always wanted to be near you. And then, the democratic movements that had consumed the rest of the Eastern Bloc spread to our country as well. The Cold War was over. The hardliners who had pushed for its development were stripped of power and the project was cancelled. The reformers, trying to cover up the existence of such a crazed project, ordered that all materials related to it be destroyed, and that we stand trial for our actions. Jamie and Gillian were to be returned to their homeland. That's about the time that I learned that you, Gillian, that you were a CIA agent, and that you were trying to pass documents on our research to your military. The country had sold us out. I'm no politician. I couldn't care less about what happened to the country. All I cared about was my research and Jamie. And I was to lose all of that, everything. For someone so young, you cannot understand how great of a shock that was. Elijah. That is when I decided I swore I would see that secret crazed project through to the end. At the time, the Bioroids were 80% finished. The main part, their endostructure, was essentially completed. But we still were having trouble with the artificial skin. The area that Jamie and I were assigned to. We called it artificial skin, but there was of course no need to duplicate T-lymphocytes, Langerhand cells, or endocrine cells. All we needed was keratinized cells and melanocytes to provide the pigment. With the artificial protein development techniques that we had in those days, full-scale synthetic cell development was very difficult. Research like this took months, years. The original project called for us to simultaneously snatch an entire country. In other words, a whole nation or an entire city had to be snatched over the course of one night. For that reason, a powerful biological agent, which could quickly and effectively kill the population of the country, was being simultaneously developed. Lucifer Alpha. That's right. A type RAO-11 virus which another team was developing. For someone like myself, who was closely involved in the project, blowing up the lab was quite a simple task. My God, Elijah, do you know what you're saying? That explosion killed half the world's population. I moved all the materials and records essential to the Bioroid project into the shelter and executed my plan on June 6th. After sealing off the lab, I brought the two of you with me to the underground shelter and we entered a cryogenic sleep. But not before I programmed an atmospheric research satellite to transmit a wake signal when the danger from Lucifer Alpha had passed. And ten years later, Lucifer Alpha naturally mutated into a non-toxic form. But the automatic revival system failed to work. Oh no. Work oh no, him. it worked. Just as planned. It revived me ten years later. A little sooner than the two of you, of course. But even though you sealed the lab with the explosion and everything, you should have been exposed. Why weren't you? Oh, I was. But by that time, the vaccine L Angels had already been developed. So everything went just as you planned it then? Yes, up until that point. But my real struggle was yet to come. My feet. My original plan was to revive Jamie as well. And for the two of us to finish the development of the Bioroids. You, Gillian, you were to stay asleep forever. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Not after looking at Jamie's peaceful face there in the pod. I also need a cup of feel. 
I could never have convinced her to work with me on the project anyway. I knew the time was not yet right, so I changed the timers of your pods to permanent on. How? How could you do such a thing? And so for the next 40 years, I worked alone in that cold and lonely room under the Kremlin, trying to complete the artificial skin for the Snatchers. For days and days, no one would visit me. I never saw the sun or felt the changing of the seasons. Still, I always had Jamie by my side. You and were Gary. always there for me to talk to. Just you and I for 40 years in that dark cellar. Oh, you poor, poor man. <laughs> that guy's poor. And then, three years ago, my research was finally completed. First, I snatched the Siberian Special Investigative Forces to establish a transport route for the Snatchers. And then, to test the effect of large-scale Snatch operations, I chose Neokobe City to be my experimental sample. Neokobe is cut off from the surrounding areas, a sort of miniature country in itself, making it a perfect test site. And since it's a melting pot of various races, it would also allow me to gather extensive data on snatcher modification and operational techniques. In addition, the element of suspicion or mistrust, which runs deep in Japanese culture, was another reason I chose this site. But your test revealed a critical flaw in your machine's artificial skin. Yes, quite unexpected, I'm afraid. All my research for 40 years. I gathered data and worked day and night to find a solution, but nothing seemed to work. So that's why you decided to bring Professor Modner here, right? That's correct. I discovered my father in one of the government's hospitals. He was old, but still very sound of mind. Naturally, he would not cooperate with me. Of course not. He'd never become involved in something like that. So, unable to receive his assistance, I decided that I had to have yours. But a mistake on my part allowed both you and Killian to be taken into custody by the authorities first. Just what are you trying to accomplish, Elijah? You must know you can never get Jamie back. I'm only interested in discovering what I can of the human animal. In the past, it was because of Jamie. My motive is different now. It sounds like you're just suffering from the wild arrogance that corrupts so many scientists. Humans are such weak creatures. No matter how much they trust one another, the tiniest speck of suspicion can destroy it all. Look at how the Snatcher problem has caused such wild unrest. No matter how much science advances or how high we set our ideals, we eventually begin to suspect each other, to hate each other, and then to kill each other. The Snatchers are nothing more than a tool for bringing out this reaction. I am simply using the Snatchers to elicit the true nature of the human animal. I think this experiment has shown me the limits of human society. I sincerely doubt it will be able to reach any greater level of prosperity on its own. If human society ever hopes to reach greater heights, what is needed is an absolute leader. A firm ruler who isn't affected by these trivial episodes of mistrust. You're crazy if you think people would ever obey Snatchers. Of course they wouldn't. They'll obey but you. But if they don't know, they cannot object. There has been a time in every age that the people have longed for a god to lead them. As long as they give the people no reason to suspect them, then they can easily become their gods. Indeed, a new race of super beings. We are almost there. Once we perfect the artificial skin, Snatchers will transcend man to become this planet's true human beings. But you'll never get your perfect skin now. Professor Modner is dead. I no longer have any use for my father. I have a sample of the new skin he developed. Once I've analyzed it, I'll be able to make as much as I need. Can we shoot him in the head now? need be. We could simply culture the keratinized cells, epithelial cells, and melanocytes in the quantities that we need. What are you talking about? How could you get a sample of perfected artificial skin? Why don't you take a look at this?
We found this in the rubble of Queen's Hospital. We didn't see that Random. coming. Oh, an acquaintance of yours? He's... he's a snatcher? <laughs> that term isn't exactly accurate. This bioroid was constructed by my father without my knowledge. He modeled it after me in my youth. He built it right here in this facility. And not only that, he programmed it to destroy Snatchers. This bioroid caused me serious difficulties. It's designed and built far better than my Snatchers. The machine itself thought it was human. My father input memories for it all the way back to childhood. Those two <laughs> were apparently mine. Haven't you yet realized? Random Hajil is Elijah Modner spelled backwards. Yeah, I think we got that. How like my father, silly old man. He did virtually overnight what I could not do in 40 years of effort. Furthermore, he makes a Bioroid so perfect, even the Bioroid itself believes itself to be real. What's more, the cells of the skin he developed are self-replicating. Once in place, no further transplants or culturing is necessary. Is he dead? Its main and locomotive systems are completely shut down. It's just scrap now. But the artificial skin is being kept alive. This we need. With this, you we can move to phase two of our plan, a full-scale infiltration of the world's major nations. The summit's already over. You'll never succeed. What does the summit matter? Nothing holds us back now that we have this perfect skin. We can go anywhere we want, and there will be no way to tell us apart. I will have free control over the world. Nothing will be able to stop me. Politics and free thought will no longer have any meaning. My will alone will decide the course of human history. You egomaniac. Do you think you can snatch the entire population? There's a fully automated snatcher factory under the Kremlin. Even as we speak, scores of new snatchers are being born. But no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to snatch the people's heart and soul. What do you hope to gain from this anyway? Jamie, the human race is composed of fools. But I, I am different. I will be its savior. Indeed, not just of mankind, but of all life on the planet. Did you history? I'm think afraid it's that won't be possible. Metal! In ten minutes, this church will be struck by a phased particle beam. I am guiding the beam from the attack satellite using GPS and 15 navigational satellites. The beam cannot miss. Everything in a two to three kilometer radius from me will be destroyed. Stop this foolishness now. I will not have my research destroyed by some souped up pocket calculator. <laughs> Metal, what happened at the summit? The delegates, worried about the snatcher menace, voted unanimously to allow the use of nuclear weapons on the city. The military is presently imposing a quarantine on Neo Kobe. What? Do they intend to kill everybody? The populace is in a state of panic. However, they have agreed to lift the quarantine if this church is struck by the phase particle beam. This is our last chance. I will handle things here. Gillian, Jamie, you two must flee. You insignificant mass of metal. You'll never... One move and I detonate. Gillian, run! Metal, this is crazy! We can't let a single snatcher get out of here. And this new artificial skin has to be destroyed as well. I will not allow some talking scrap pile to get away with this. If you were the aiming point for the beam, then I'll just have you thrown out of here. Grab this little one and take him out of here. Please, not another sequence. Yeah, I told you they should have destroyed the Snatchers first. Please no. Metal! Cowardly little robot. You always were a real pain in the butt.
What's that? What? How did... You're supposed to be deactivated. I don't go down that easy, old man. Stop this foolish... <sighs> Shut up! Let's try to make our final moments peaceful, shall we? And you snatchers, you touch the little guy and the old man's head comes off! Random! I've always hated being used. Why don't you watch the final act with me? Okay, uh, can we not? That could Julia, be two hours. You only have five minutes. The turbo cycle is just outside on standby. Use that to flee. Let me go. I'm Elijah Modner. I'm your original. I don't care if I'm an original or a copy or what. You and I are gonna die right here. If we both die, there won't be a copy anymore now, will there? The stupid logic of a simpleton. Of a machine. Whatever it is, it's my will! Machines have no will. Machines cannot sacrifice themselves. We'll see about that. You have four minutes. You must go. And don't forget to take care of the factory under the Kremlin. Stop! Gillian, even if these memories in my head are fiction... Yeah, I know what you mean. Our memories of our time together are all too real, Random. Gillian, you become one hell of a junker. Gillian, it has been most recreational being your partner. Oh, metal! If you can, try to pick up the pieces for me, okay? Like we did for Little John. Little John? Oh! Okay, metal. Hurry! You only have three minutes! Thanks! Thanks, you two! Jamie, come on! Pathetic old fool. You don't even know how to love someone. You stupid machine. What is that idiotic grin supposed to mean? By snatching you, I'm finally gonna get my real self back. Random. There's less than one minute to go. Thanks to you, everything will be fine. You don't owe me any thanks. Sorry to get you involved in such a big job. You did great. You're a hell of a junker. Three, two, one, here it comes! Later, kid! Uh, that looks like a nuke explosion, not not targeted to the church. So you're really going, aren't you? It's our responsibility, too. Besides, if I go to Moscow, I may get some of my memory back. And if that happens, I'll be able to love you even more than I do now. Wait for me. I want to be with you, but first I've got to destroy this terrible factory of theirs. Jamie, when I get back, let's try living together again. What do you say? About the date with Mika. She promised dinner. We'll be waiting for you, too. Katrina! Mika! You're here too? Of, of you course. be happy, Buster, with all these beautiful women seeing you off. I'm happy you came. Uh, uh, let me introduce my, my wife. Jamie Seed. I suppose it's a little odd introducing myself a second time, though. What do you mean? Uh, you've never met them before, have you? What are you talking about, Gillian? We're good friends. Huh? Uh, since when? It's the first time I've met her in person, but I've spoken with her on the video phone a lot of times. What? Have you guys been talking about me behind my back?
<laughs> oh, okay, we're going. Let's look before we talk. Okay. I'm really sorry for all the worry I've caused you. That's talking, not looking. <laughs> this kid has had such a rough time. She lost almost everything practically overnight. She's done a really great job. I owe her a lot of thanks. Trying to learn more about what you was what got our relationship started. I was telling Mika about how lonely it was being home all alone all the time, and she told me that Jamie was always worried about me. So I gave her a video phone call. How thrilling. Before I knew it, we really became close, didn't we? With even Alice gone, I was really lonely. Katrina. Our relationship has gone beyond just being friends. Beyond just friends? <clears throat> that sounds pretty good to me. I'm happy to say that in front of my wife. That I'm trying to also get back together with. They're both so easy to talk to. It's like I've got two real sisters now. You're right. It is a story of three sisters. We streamed three sister story after all. You were right, Sprint. You were right. Oh, don't be stupid, Gillian. You have a warped mind sometimes, you know? They're just like family to me now. I don't care if you get your memory back or not. Why? Because getting your memory back will mean that you'll remember those things about me that you hated. Things that I hated? What are you talking about? Dealing with each other's imperfections is part of what being married is all about, Jamie. Gillian. Don't worry. No memories will change how I feel about you. And Mika and Katrina. Oh, don't be stupid, Gillian. Oh, okay, that's... We've we exhausted talking to Mika. While you're away, it's okay for Jamie to come and live with me. Yeah, I have no problem with that at all. It will shorten my commute as well, so I'll be killing two birds with one stone. Great, I'm so happy. I'm so tired of living alone. Maybe ask Katrina if I can move in with her in the near future, despite the fact that she just offered for me to live with her, and I accepted. I feel almost as if I've got a new little sister. It's really wonderful. Katrina is such a cheerful and sweet kid. So have they finalized what they're going to do about Junker operations? I suppose this will end up being our last mission, huh? Well, originally they were planning on disbanding the team, but now they've decided to keep us in business. So that means... That's right. We've been designated as one of the government's special police divisions. That puts us above the regular cops. So the government has decided that crime by machines poses a bigger threat than crime by humans from here on out, huh? They've chosen the new chief, too. So when you get back, you'll get to meet the new head honcho. Is it well, me? it's comforting to know I've got a place I can come back to. Yeah, he never picked up Metal Gear's remains. Or memories, or whatever. Have a safe trip, Second Lieutenant Seed. I'm a Second Lieutenant as well, so let's try to work well together when you get back. Is that supposed to be a salute? What? I'm a Second Lieutenant? How come my rank is even lower than what I had in the army, huh? And I'll forgive you for that little incident, alright? <laughs> with the towel. <laughs> the shower. When you get back from this job, you still have a dinner date to keep with me, you know. Don't worry. I won't forget my promises to either of you. Oops, oh, almost forgot. Of course, I'll want to spend some private moments with my wife, too, huh? Oh, God. Uh, what's wrong, Jamie? Harry. Harry and I will be waiting for you to get home. That's Harry's hat. We can do it this time, Gillian. Not some fake couple like before, but with love and trust. I know, Jamie. Take care, Gillian. I'll see you, Jamie. Wait, she has purple eyes. Wait for me. Metal Gear. With you, please. you? <laughs> I 
a Sega CD. Metal? With the Genesis. Yes, sir. We didn't have a good frame to work with, so this is just a temporary body. Just call me Metal Gear. Sega CD for now. <coughs> so they found your memory chip in one piece, Take eh? Take a drive. Random protected it from the blast of the beam. Random, huh? Napoleon! Wait a second. I've heard that sneeze somewhere before. Really? I didn't hear anything. Anyway, I want to know if you'll take me with you. Please, Gillian, please take me with you. Hurry up and get on board, partner. Yes, sir, Gillian. Her hair is flying, flapping in the breeze. Throughout history, suspicion has always bred conflict. Yes. The real conflict, though, resides in people's hearts right here this conflict has just begun no we must end the conflict oh okay there it is yes after 13 hours and 30 minutes snatcher has been snatched He rescued Neo Kobe City from the scourge of the Snatchers. Elijah Random, Benson Cunningham, Freddie Nielsen, Jin Tuso, and all of them have been taken care of. Thanks to Metal Gear, Napoleon, and Gillian's harem of the ladies. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was quite a lot of it. I mean, the story was good. I won't deny that. Uh, you know, it's kind of the first visual novel-esque game that I've played. And, uh... I did appreciate there were a few puzzles. So that wasn't bad. The action sequences were, for the most part, fine. Although, at the end... I was a little rough at the end, but beatable. But yeah, I did not care for the... Look at look and investigate everything multiple times until something magically happens and then a new option appears. Like that was that was a little uh, well, actually not a little, a lot. Very tedious. Not my favorite. I understand that's part of the genre, apparently, the subgenre of visual novels. Not my favorite. I mean, this very tedious. But uh, yeah, it was a good story. It was a good story. If a little uh, overwrought and uh, cheesy, the dialogue was cringeworthy at times, and the the perviness of Gillian was a bit hard to stomach at sometimes. Especially remember in the original Japanese computer versions, uh, Katrina's 14 years old, so he's like going into the shower with her. I mean, that's yikes. Yeah, campy, campy is another way to put it. It definitely felt like very Saturday morning cartoony, though, with uh, especially with yeah Jeff Lupatin, the voice actor for Gillian Seed. Oh, yeah, I mean, you might as well just it might as well just be a movie at that point, right? Right, Sprint. Do everything multiple times. Hopefully, most of them have at least some puzzles, the way this one kind of did. This one had like maybe three or four puzzles. Which, the ratio of puzzles to game length isn't isn't the best, but at least there were a few, so it didn't feel totally mindless, but yeah. But yeah, choose your own adventure would be about it would be better. Yeah. Really, Metal Gear Solid is more cinematic than gameplay. And that and that's in a, in like a, from an action series too. That must be really Maybe some somewhat frustrating. So what other? Yeah, let's see what other uh, Kojima games we have on our. We're gonna end up playing 
after Snatcher. Uh, definitely a Police Knox. But I'm curious about the others. Because I know Metal Gear Solid series, that's all action. So I don't know if... Are there any other adventure ones? SD Snatcher is, is an RPG. Again, it's the same characters and everything. Yeah, and the Metal Gear Solid series is like a uh, action. Movie Games considers it. Alright, so it might just be Police Knots. Zone of the Enders is action, as is Lunar Knights. Oh, yeah. Stealth action. Wow, they even have the leg shot. Comedic retelling of the story. Oh, in an action RPG. That might be interesting as like a pair of games to replay. Alright, cool. Well, thank you, Nico, for the pick. Snatcher. All right, I guess that's it. Can you do anything else from here? Oh, oh press start. Yeah, it just goes back to the start. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so let's head to our Hall of Adventure. We're going to add game number 193, Snatcher. Put it up on the shelf. There we go. 193 games in the books. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think like a... I'm gonna have to... think for like a night or so about the rating for this, because this is gonna be... I have to keep in mind that it's a visual novel, so I, I, I can't quite hold it on the same, you know, scale that I would ordinarily. I'll have to process through my thoughts, because again, the music I think actually was the best part of the game. Music is great. Even if it got a little repetitive in parts, but some of the tracks got overused. But on the whole, the music is excellent. And it was like cinematic presentation for the most part. Keeping in mind, this was originally made in 88. Um, and the story, you know, was very in-depth. Just the, the dialogue was, yeah, a little, little too hammy and uh, the gameplay was not great. But again, have to keep in mind visual novel. <laughs> 